Coach Sean Freelo here. Coach, what's your thoughts on the game? Uh, well, tonight we, we ran against, uh, we ran into a team that was very efficient. Uh, they played really, really well. I probably started that second half for, for 10 minutes. They, I don't think they missed a shot for a while. I think they were shooting probably about 75%. Um, I changed it up and started going run and jump press to try and just change up the momentum a little bit. Uh, we actually had some, uh, I guess, momentum and energy going. Um, I thought, uh, Zach Chappelle played really well. Um, he had 10 points, four, uh, four assists, no, no turnovers, which was great. Thought uh, Seneca Knight was really good. Uh, 14 points, three assists, one turnover. And I thought uh, Brian Rodriguez, who's a non-scholarship player for us, played really well. He had 13 points. Uh, more importantly, he had no, no turnovers. So uh, as a team, we had 11 which is really good. Obviously, I think we're, we're solving that problem right now because we, uh, we were at 16, 17, 18. Uh, so I think we've got that pretty much under control. We had 15 assists. Uh, so that, that is major improvement for our team. Um, but we weren't able to guard. We weren't able to guard them. And uh, obviously, uh, we, we did a little better from the free throw line. You know, we shot 64%. It was really low. Uh, last game was the reason why we lost the last game. So, thought we made improvement there. Questions for Coach. Coach, you mentioned some of the struggles defensively. Obviously, yes. Colorado shot the ball really proficiently. Um, but what do you guys think you guys were missing from the defensive end and maybe how led some of those game winning shots and whatnot? What were we missing? Um, this is a make miss game. So, um, it's not that. Uh, we did. We didn't do anything. It was they were just making shots. Um, you know, Noah Bauman had a great game against Utah State, right? He was he he was hot, right? Couldn't miss. They had like three or four or five guys today that couldn't miss. So we we you know we experienced that from three or four guys on a, on another team. Um, so again, um, it wasn't that we weren't playing with energy. They were just making shots. So then that's why I changed up in the second half and just started running, jumping, trying to get them out of rhythm. Um, not that it worked, but it gave us a little energy, I think. Seneca uh, mentioned some of the early turnovers. Uh, kind of yeah. led to this, you know, them getting in a rhythm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I w get, for them getting into a rhythm offensively, yeah, maybe. I mean, we had eight turnovers in the first half. We only had three in the second half. But again, the game was probably out of reach. Um, but yes, to start the game off uh, in the first half, we had eight, which is, I would say, uncharacteristic for us recently. <laughs> uh, recently. And uh, Nico Cabacho, uh, Cabacho, he had 18 rebounds. What, what was that from you? Yeah, he's a great player. I mean, he's a first team. He's probably a first team all league player. Uh, really good player. We talked about him. We tried to keep the ball out of his hand, but he's a really good passer as well. He had six assists. No turnovers. We just tried to keep the ball out of his hand. However, when the shot went up, we weren't able to get a body on him. He, he was able to get out and transition. He got a couple easy baskets. Uh, but, again, he, he's a really good player, a really good player. And uh, they were able to make shots playing off of him. Uh, Chris Martin, um, Colorado State, led the game in scoring. Uh, what was kind of uh, the challenges of defending a guy? Obviously, you, you mentioned you know, just – couldn't really miss, but what about him in particular presented challenges for you guys tonight? I don't think it's anything in particular of him. It's just they have guys that can shoot the ball. So they have a number of guys mm -hmm. that can really shoot the ball. It just it just happened to be he had 19. You know, it could have been J.D. Page. It could have been, you know, Thistlewood that could have done that because they're capable of making those shots. He just had more shots available to him, and, and he was able to make them. But it was really – it's really off of what they run – and getting the ball to Cavaccio uh, away from the basket, so you have to uh, you have to be cognizant of four other guys on the court. And he was just a recipient. Um, mm -hmm. It could have been it could have been anyone. You mentioned that Cav uh, or the uh, Seneca and uh, yeah, they, they mentioned that Camacho was going to be kind of a focus defensively tonight. What what was the approach against him? And uh, well, the approach was to get the ball out of his hands. Mm -hmm. But again. If he's, if he's catching it on the block, you try to get the ball out of his hands. But he's a good passer. So when you go and double, 
he had six assists and no turnovers. So that means he's finding guys that are making the shot. It's no different than what we do. It's just we weren't able to make the shot. So if Mike gets double teamed or if one of our guys gets double teamed, you pass it out and the ball moves around. And then whoever it moves around to, that guy has the open shot. That's why it's a make miss game. So um, that's basically what the game came down to. It wasn't specifically uh, a game plan against maybe a specific guy. We did have to get the ball out of Cavaccio's hands. But when you do that, it forms a double team somewhere, and then the ball has to rotate. And then it comes down to a make-miss game. Because even though you're rotating, you're not going to get there fast enough. And if you really look at our game, the game that we played tonight, we had those same shots, but we couldn't make them. And again, it comes down to just a make-miss game. Coach, you touched on a little bit, but um, obviously you're 5-21 from three. Do you yeah. think it's just a matter of just having one of those off nights, missing up shots? Or we haven't been shooting the ball well. Um, we had shots against UNLV late, uh, and we weren't able to make them. So, again, you know, it's not that we were taking bad shots. It's just that when a double team happens or someone overhelps and you pass the ball out, you're going to create rotation. Now, once the ball moves around, hopefully you're, you're ready to, to knock it down. Uh, and, they, again, they had four or five guys that could do that and did it, did it tonight. Because it can change, you know, it can change in a heartbeat. Um, I don't know if they're going to be red hot the next game. They might be cold. It might be cold as ice. You never know. Uh, you mentioned Brian. Um, yeah. Had a great game. He's had limited minutes recently. You think you're going to play him a little more? Yeah, I'm going to try and play him more. Um, you know, we have our. If you turn it over, you know, I'm trying to, and I've, I've never done this before, but. The reason why the turnovers are going down is because we have a turn it over, come out policy. And I've never really done that as a head coach before. Didn't know if I really believed in it at first. But I needed to do that to help our players understand that you have to value the ball. And guess what? In the last three games, the numbers have gone down drastically. So we're going to continue to do that. And I wanted to give Brian a shot. And he did a great job. He didn't turn it over. He made shots, made plays. That's all I can ask for. Assists are up as well. Do you think you know, maybe just having more time to gel and build that chemistry? Uh, you know what? I think, yeah, I think there's a little, um, yeah, to build chemistry and to gel. But you know what? I think it's more of us not turning the ball over. Like, think about our high turnover games that we've had. We've had like 18, 19, 20, right? But we've also had like 19 assists. So I think what you're seeing is it's just a function of the turnovers are going down. So you just see, oh, wow, we're positive. There are 17 assists. And we're basically all we're doing is we're just taking care of the ball more. And when you do that, you give yourself a chance to make a shot. It doesn't allow the team to get more attempts. And I think that's what it is right now moving forward. So that's why I think we are getting better in incremental stages. I mean, 11 turnovers around the country is a, is a decent number in, in a game. Uh, Obviously, we want to get that lower. And again, we only had three in the second half. And that's kind of where we've been trending to. It's either been in the first half or the second half, right? We had three against New Mexico. I think we had three against UNLV in the first half. And then we have eight. This time, it was reversed. We had eight, and then we had three. So hopefully, we can put two halves together, maybe where we have three and three, and we only have six for the game. Coach, there's a lot of uh, teams out there that, you know, you know the assist turnover ratio is like a certain number in mind. That coaches have. Is there a number that you, you know, would, you know? Really I mean, say? we would like to get it below ten. I think you can get it below ten. I think with what we do, we can get it below ten. And the reason why I believe in that is because we've done halves of three. Mm -hmm. So I think that we can do that. There's, there's no question in my mind we can do it. Anything else? Thanks, coach. Okay. Thanks, Thank you, coach. I know. We have Seneca Knight, Brian Rodriguez, Flores here. Questions for either player. Uh, Brian, season high in almost everything, all at right for you. Uh, everything I'm looking for today, man. I feel like my, my time was in the front window, and I guess today was good. This is kind of one of the really questions you had defensively tonight. Colorado State shot 60, near 60% 60 from the floor, almost finished up from the three point line. What, what was kind of lacking defensively for you guys, and why wasn't it, were you able to click? Um, I think it's majority of like the turnovers we committed at the beginning of the game.
So they got like easy buckets, transition layup dunks, and that kind of helped them like get started and rolling and everything. And then plus getting back on defense, when uh, we trapped at the end, just locating the shooters, who can shoot, who can't. And I feel like that made a big difference if we were to get back. Um, not a great shooting performance from the team in general. What went wrong with that? Um, the, we weren't shooting well, but our turnovers, we're losing our turnovers. Um, we're doing everything we're supposed to tell them to do. And we're, we're improving every single game on everything Coach wants us to do. Um, rebounds, another issue. I think it's simple. They were just more aggressive. They just got to a loose ball that we didn't get to. They just capitalized off of it. What were you guys seeing from them on defense? You obviously, like I said, the shooting percentage was low. Should have took more shots than you guys tonight. What What were you guys seeing? What like from their defensive attack, and how did that kind of throw your game off? Um, I don't think the defense had really anything to do with it. I think it was the majority on us. Uh -huh. But uh, they just man to man. In the second half, once we were getting back here, they tried to force us to not use the ball screen. But other than that, I think it was just mainly on us. Well, you mentioned that, Vince. So what, what do you think from your line that you guys have done differently to try to um, flip that around? Make shots. It's as simple as that? <laughs> yeah, just simple. Just make shots. Make them guard us. Don't help out. But just make shots. That's all. Obviously, it's been a tough season for you guys tonight. I mean, one of the worst home losses of the season. What's the message like in the locker room? And can you kind of talk about that uh, environment and what the atmosphere is like? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we're just keeping our heads high every single game. You know, we're getting better every single game. We're doing everything coaches want to do, like keeping our team to a certain percentage, limiting tur turnovers and rebounding the ball. We're getting better every single uh, aspect of the game. So we should be we should be fine. I say the main key is just keep our head up and stay positive because we've seen that last game we could play with people. We just gotta do it consistently. Just gonna stay consistent. Um, obviously, um, struggled perimeter defense. Uh, what adjustments did you guys try to make, and what went wrong with that? Um, perimeter defense. I mean, we was trying to gap and stay, so they won't get easy layups, easy drive bys. But uh, in the second half, we try to locate shooters better. But uh, we still gotta get better at that, though. You know, we can shoot. What kind of problems did uh, Camacho present for, presented for you guys tonight? He was really big on the floor physically uh, and uh, you know, for his performance as well. Uh, he a really good player. He well, yeah, he had um, 18 and 18 or something like that, close to it. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a really good player. He was the main emphasis going into the game. We just had to – we tried to keep him off the glass. Just got to do a better job of that. But he, he, he was a good player. Same question for Chris Martin. Uh, game high score – uh, kind of shot the lights out of the gym tonight in a way. Uh, can you kind of talk about how tough of a guard he was tonight? Uh, yeah, he was a major part. He was um, hitting shots, hitting tough threes, hitting wide open threes. So he he was a major part in it. We had to we have to locate him better. Okay, thanks guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you guys.